Hey guys, welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. Adam here. Like I said at the end of my previous episode, we're going to try to launch a map satellite using the new ScanSat mod. Uh, I have already pre-built a, uh, a, a satellite. It's going to use the same launch vehicle as those other satellites did. So we should have a good enough uh, system in place now that it won't be an issue in terms of have it going out of comms range. I am using the same kind of... Uh, design here with the RCS so I can get it its orbit finalized here. It's got a couple solar panels, some batteries, a radiator, which is way bigger than it needs, but it kind of provides a body to the to the thing. And then this, this is actually the 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 only scanner that I have from this it's actually available yet. I guess this is supposed these cameras are supposed to provide science somehow. I don't know anything about that yet. But there's basically I don't know how many parts there are. There's there's a few parts involved with this with scan the scan map system. So we have the Altimeter, altimeter sensor. So this is going to give us like our basic mapping. There are other sensors for biomes and stuff that we'll be able to launch later, but those haven't been unlocked in the tech tree yet. Um, and then we also have the this is the receiver basically that goes on. I guess it's supposed to go on vehicles, but it's kind of huge. I don't know how that's going to work out, but it says it's going to yeah. It's not really that small. It says it's, it's a small device. It's kind of huge, but that'll be something to worry about for rovers and stuff. And just to make sure everything goes back together correctly, let's just reload the save here. And let's get this thing out on the launch pad. So this is the same uh, rocket design that I used to launch the previous satellites. It's a modified one. Oh, here we go. Here's the window. I'm not going to try using that instrument until we actually get up into space. But, um... It's basically the same uh, launch vehicle that I used to get those other satellites up uh, when I was doing it off screen. It's modified slightly, a longer section here in the middle. I ended up getting it working pretty good. It can get stuff into polar orbits, which does require a little bit more delta V. I just want to kind of get tipped away from the space center a little bit. I always do that little tiny turn. I'm not really doing a gravity turn yet, but... Eventually, I guess landing stuff on those buildings will damage them and you'll have to pay for it and stuff, so this gives us a better uh, approach. Although that stuff's still raining down on the KSP, but whatever, KSC. So, this should be a pretty straightforward orbit. I should probably get my orbital information up, shouldn't I? And I should probably move that over yonder so I can actually see what the heck's going on. So, uh, this is going to be like, whenever I launch any small satellites into low carbon orbit, I'm going to use the same rocket. Uh, it's, it's been working very well now that i got it kind of dialed in. It can get stuff up. It can't quite get them to geostationary orbit, so when we get to that point, we'll have to beef it up. But we'll probably have better technology by the time we're worried too much about that. So, uh, definitely could use a little more thrust, because as you see, we're kind of sliding sideways a little bit. Which isn't the most efficient thing, but it's definitely good enough to get us there. I'm going to get Maneuver Planner up, too. Because I just let MegJev handle the final orbit stuff. Well, not the final orbit. Well, yeah, the final entry into orbit, and then I'll do the maneuvering from there. Let MegJev handle a lot of this, because it's boring. Done enough of this, thank you. I know some people don't like MegJev, but frankly, I've done enough launches that I do not care to continue to do them manually more mech jeb automation I can have the happier I am so let's start our gravity turn a little more aggressively here now so we can start building up some speed before we have to ditch this main stage in a second I don't it continues to do that I don't really understand what the hell the deal with that is I guess it's just when we get into orbital kind of speeds it snaps into a, a different view ditch that get our solar panels out and 100,000 is all we need. That wasn't as good of a gravity turn as it should have been, but it's good enough. So it's it's satellite looking, kind of, you know? It's not terrible. I have to do an inclination adjustment here, too, because my inclination is not that good. But the fortunate... Yeah, look how straight up we came. That was way too much straight upness. But fortunately, it doesn't matter, because plenty of fuel to do what we need to do here. And as you can see... Well, we're still in range of the Space Center now, but we got a good relay system set up, so it's not going to be an issue once we get over the horizon. I'm going to turn on the RCS so MechJeb has a little bit more control here. Pretty big Delta V requirement to 
get our orbit going here. I have no idea how much electricity this thing actually uses. I don't think it's much, if anything, really. So I probably have more than enough solar panels and batteries on here, but I want to make, you know, I wanted to be sure. So better safe than sorry, I always say. In this series, I'm not worrying about space junk too much. As long as it's not in low, low orbit, I don't really care. And I've, I really have no idea what the best altitude to put the satellite into is going to be to get the best uh, best results. I don't even know what range this sensor has. So I think what I'll probably do is just leave it in this 100 kilometer orbit. We'll activate the sensor, see how it's performing, and then maybe boost up to like 250 and see how it does there. Just to compare. Because uh, with ISA MapSat, you definitely want it to be higher. But I know this actually calculates things completely differently. It takes all of its information from the actual game engine, I guess. It's way less resource intensive. I would probably have crashed trying to launch an ISA MapSat. I would basically have to do that the very first thing I did if I was trying to use MapSat for anything. And uh, one of the features of this mod also is that you can scan as long as you have a. a device related to this system on your vehicle it will continue to scan I think it might even continue to scan if you don't have a device related to it uh, I kind of like this model it's not bad so let's see what sort of scan results we're getting here we got shows you our instruments it says scan instruments no data why are we getting no data uh, got something counting up here so we are we're doing the low resolution now that's what it's telling me I think is that we're doing low resolution I don't know what that point three means maybe it's how much scanning has been done so I'm not gonna worry about our ink oh yeah it's it's scanning let's see we can see the big map here Ooh, that's pretty cool this is a way better layout than ISA maps at so it's actually show that's our position there it's filling in the map and it is low resolution I guess that's our projected orbit that's pretty cool I think I like the ScanSat system quite a lot. What is this telling me? Oh, it's projections, different projections, okay. So we got a... Uh, we can't look at the slope, we can look at the color map, I guess. Grid. Why are we not getting anything? Oh, there we go. Well, that's really cool. So I can show flags, I can show markers. I like this. This is fairly awesome. How do I get back to the original projection I was on, though? It's going to take a little bit of learning here. Oh, there's a legend. Polar. Oh, neat. I think this is a huge improvement. I'm really impressed. It's one of the better mods I've seen. Alright, so I'm going to let scan for a while like this, and then I'm going to boost the orbit up. Try to see what we can do and I'm, I'm gonna probably leave the vehicle for a while and just see how the scan progresses so uh, I'll be back in a few minutes I'm gonna adjust some stuff try to figure this out All right, so we're uh, working on changing our inclination I'm gonna go to an 85 degree inclination I don't want to be exactly at 90 degrees for this satellite I've also boosted my apoapsis up to 250,000 or <laughs> 250,000 meters okay yeah that will work uh, the reason being that uh, we get a little bit more scanning done from this. It doesn't seem to have affected... Uh, we might be losing range now. I don't know what that was about. Things got all staticky. Are we still mapping? I think we're still mapping. So, I'm going to go ahead and... Circular... Create and execute. Uh, let's see if we're still mapping here. But it, it seems completely irrelevant what sort of width you get out of this thing based on uh, on altitude. It doesn't seem to matter. Got a little skip there. I think we are getting out of range a little bit, aren't we? Well, no, we're actually at a lower range. No, I don't, I don't know what's going on with that. We're at a lower altitude now and it was skipping. I don't I don't rightly know. I guess we'll figure it out. And we're kind yeah, we're getting full polar coverage now. That's what I wanted. The unfortunate thing is the closer to 90 degrees you get, the better the coverage at the poles is and the worse it is everywhere else. But um, this should still eventually map everything, I would think. 
Let's go ahead and abort that execution because I don't want to go over this 250. We will remove the node. And now I'm going to manually fine tune this thing a little bit, I think, because. Uh, well, let's, before we do anything, let's just make sure we're still scanning. Let's see here. Yeah, we're still scanning. So, unfortunately, I only have this one instrument available for it, which means when I unlock new instruments, we're going to have to launch more satellites. But I think that's a cool, cool method. It's better than ISA in that way, too. So, uh, I'm just going to ditch this stage here. I don't really care. And then we're going to fine tune our actual orbit with the RCS. Whoa, that thing whips around like crazy. So, and it doesn't really matter, but I'm going to get it to about what I can here. Alright, so we'll call 250 good. Good enough. And we're not going to hit that thing. So, cool. Let's swing around to the other side and I'll fix the other side when we get to Apoapsis. So where's our periapsis, rather? Where's our periapsis? That's our peri our apoapsis. And the relay network is working flawlessly. We're getting tons of coverage. Look at all those potential connections coming in. So that's not a problem at all, which I'm very relieved to see. Wasn't sure how that was actually going to perform, but it's performing flawlessly. And I warped right past that, didn't I? All right, so we're still facing retrograde. So let's just... Why do I have no control? It's actually probably better, like a real satellite would probably hang in the sky for a minute, like do like a kind of elliptical orbit, but I'm not doing that. So whatever, it's good. Shut that down. Uh, I think this this mod is going to make a big difference. And one thing I do want to go test, let's go back to the Space Center. Allegedly, we can have the scanning continue while we're doing other things. So... I'm just going to slap one of those receivers on the side of a command pod with a battery and see what we get. So let's go ahead and just make sure that's updated. Create a new vehicle, such as it is. Let's put this here. Slap one of these bad boys on it. And I don't know how much power it needs, so I'm just going to slap some sort of giant battery on it. Even though I don't use those batteries anymore because they're ugly. The stock batteries are very ugly. So this is one of the big selling points, is that we can do other things, and it should continue to work just fine while we're doing other things. So, let's go ahead and activate, or open the map. And yeah, see, there's Satellite 1. Let's see what happens when we do some time warping. And look at that! Sure enough, it's mapping! That is sweet! That is going to be such a time saver. Wow! I'm really impressed. I like that. So, uh... I guess that pretty much does it. I'm just going to go ahead and finish up this map. It's just a low resolution map of Kerbin. Um, I think we'll probably have to send one of these out to the MUN today, too. Uh, I'm going to have to figure out if I have enough Delta V to get this out to the MUN. It's probably going to be kind of tight on the budget, but I'm going to probably have to redesign the launch vehicle for that a little bit. I do want to get one of these out to the MUN, um, but that's going to involve putting communication satellites out there, too. Maybe we'll just launch a guy and do this all the relay stuff later. Because we can see, you know, for the for future uh, missions, I probably will actually uh, map it out before we go. But for Minmus and the MUN, we'll assume the telescopes on Kerbin are good enough that they can do ground observations and pick out a landing site without having to actually do detailed mapping. So, anyway guys, I think I'm going to end it here for today. I have the Kerbal Chatter thing on. Um, I'm going to end it here for today. When we come back, we'll go ahead and start working on getting a man to land out on the moon so we can get some more technology unlocked. Thanks for watching.